So this video went a little bit mental recently, got a few million views, and from the comments in there, a lot of them were real cringeworthy, I have to say. And a lot of people seem to be trying to adopt the one-size-fits-all model to, to boating and how we should cross waves. So I want to give you just some factors, some variables to think about when you're operating a boat in waves. Now, for this video alone, I want to talk about going out in a head sea. So that's waves coming towards you. Now, how you operate the boat depends entirely on your boat. So let's talk about an open boat. An open boat is something with no superstructure like I have here potentially or a bow rider or something like that now I am going to have a caveat here I don't believe that bow riders are necessarily the best boats to be going out in in heavy sort of sea state but if you are in a boat that has an open deck your biggest risk actually is flooding water ingress because you can take a wave up over the bow it will enter the the boat and potentially cause stability issues if you can't evacuate it quick enough. So look, in those situations, you might want to think about trimming the bow up slightly and you might want to think about maybe taking those waves at a bit of an angle. Now, the reason for that is you actually want to try and avoid the water coming into the boat, and that does give you a bit of assistance. But here's the problem with that. If you don't understand that principle and you're out in inappropriate conditions for your boat, if you trim the bow up too much and you hit a wave, you're going to encounter what's called the pendulum effect. Now, this video here nicely illustrates the pendulum effect. What happens is the, the, the bow hits the wave and it, a lot of people, the gas it too much and, and up comes the bow and the wind catches that. As soon as the stern clears the wave, it actually, the weight of the engine swings that stern forward and down she goes and you might swamp the engines or worst case scenario, you might induce a bow over a stern capsize. So that's the pendulum effect and we need to avoid that. So how do we avoid that? Well, generally speaking, that's when we want to think about trimming down. So when we're challenging big, bigger waves, Ways that you're worried might actually affect the stability of the boat you might want to think about trimming down and then taking those waves more at 90 degrees um, but here's how you use the power in those situations so as the wave is coming towards you yeah you probably want to slow down as the wave approaches now as the wave approaches just increase power slightly on the boat bring her up into the rev range don't gun it or gas it and as that wave breaks through the bow will start rising that's when you want to trim down and if you if you give it too much power she's going to rock it out of the wave so that's when we as soon as you get about a third of the boat length clear of the wave ease up on the power and then as the bow the bow of the boat begins to fall down you want to apply some some propulsion some power to try and soften out the landing as you land now they're quite big waves and that's uh, how i personally like to challenge those bigger waves that are coming at me now speed, let's talk about speed for a second. Yeah, there's a, there's a time for speed and there's a time for uh, slow as pro, as I say. Now speed generally is used when we're ducking and diving waves, and particularly if you're in predictable sets of waves coming in. Um, you do want a, a bit of speed to get ahead of waves, to duck around waves, and that's absolutely fine. But as I said previously, when the wave, it's, it's uh, unavoidable, and you need to make a decision. If you can't outrun it, you've got to come off the power, square up to the wave, and as the wave comes, do exactly what I just said. Now, the, another time that we might want to trim up and apply some speed, here's where the length of the boat comes into consideration. So if you've got a long boat and uh, you've got a short wavelength, let's give you an example. If your boat is 10 meters long, and the wavelength, so that's the distance from peak to peak, is just say that's uh, eight meters. That means the boat can actually bridge the peaks of those waves. So in those situations, yes, absolutely, you can trim the bow up and you can skim across the tops of those waves and off you go, happy days. But you've got to keep good eyes out because the consequence of getting that wrong are in this video, as you can see here. So this guy comes out, lots of gas, isn't prepared, hasn't spotted the big gap in the wavelength, and he's just gassed it off of one, and he's landed on the, uh, on the face of the next wave coming towards him. And I can assure you, I've been in that situation, and it hurts a lot. So to come out of an inlet, um, have a look at this video. This video... They came out way too fast, not enough consideration to the wavelength um, uh, uh, and how to appropriately challenge those waves. The end result, in fact, was um, broken ribs and, and whiplash, which is surprisingly common. So be aware you've got consequences of um, coming out uh, too fast. Why not come out like this boat here? Yeah, it's a little bit roly-poly up and down. Now, we don't want to come out too slow. Yes, we don't want to wallow and get caught broadside by the waves and have a, a potential uh, rollover 
over situation. Now, a lot of those inlets, you've got the tide or the current drawing you out to sea. So yeah, you might actually be drawn out and you do need to keep minimum steerage speed. So a little bit of revs on the engine, but not too much will see you nicely cross those waves. So as you saw from that video there, he made it out, no problems, and there was a reasonable uh, sea running there. Um, so look, hopefully that's been helpful. That's a few of the guys I just think of at the moment. If I think of any more, I'll, I'll make another video, but hopefully that's helped you out for now. And uh, if you've not done so, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel. It helps me out. I'm really trying to grow this channel, and the more people I can get following us, the, uh, the more content I'll be able to make because I'll focus more of my time and effort on it. Anyway, I'll catch you next video.